it's the only way to start my week. If I don't, don't get anything done. After church on Sunday and coming here on Monday morning, it just helps direct me in a better way for the week. Well, it's a it's a great one of the greatest fellowships that I've ever been a part of. About three years ago, uh, a pastor or a reverend walked across the yard, and we were talking about what could we do, and we organized share prayer and a biscuit. And prayer and a biscuit, the soul has to be fed, and the human body. And he looked at me. He says, "Prayer and a biscuit." And he said, that is good. So that's how Prayer and a Biscuit was started. We're in the Presbyterian Fellowship Hall now. We're having a good time. We're serving the Lord, helping people. And that's what our main object is in the community any way we can. It's a biscuit to start the day off with and a prayer to start the week off with. I'm trying to get my neighbors to come, you know, I'm telling them about the prayer and the biscuit. Hey, just come and you're going to enjoy yourself. By coming to this prayer and the biscuit, it has given me a different insight on people and realized that even though we are of different races, but we are still one and we are all God's children. God's children, amen. And we share what we believe in and there to give each other support and I like that about you know being able to come here it helps me start my week off with the prayer and the scripture and being able to go through the week and being able to recognize the opportunities to help someone else along the way Monday morning, 7.30, guess where everybody's at? It's Prayer and a Biscuit right here in Vander, North Carolina. I reckon we started a little over three years ago over at Big John's Furniture Store. A couple of us gathering together and it's just turned and grown exponentially. It's one of the biggest kept secrets around here. And we just want to thank the church and the Lord. Amen. 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 Pray, pray in God's will. I mean, if it ain't his will, you can pray for the next hundred years, it ain't gonna happen. And he knows the time that he wants you to receive what you want. But he doesn't just say, well, I need this done right now, God, and it happens. It doesn't work like that. A lot of times, just a bunch of words, if you don't have faith, what yeah. you're praying for, you know. So I, I think we maybe should add the word faith when we saw that prayer because uh, that's what it's all about. You just keep praying and, and you know, you don't really have faith in what you're praying for. You're not going to, your prayer's not going to be answered. In Hebrew 11 and 1 say, now faith is a substance of things that's hoped for, but the evidence of things that's not seen. So if we're going to hope and not see it, God is going to prevent it because it doesn't happen to me. Things that I have prayed for, I didn't see. After a while, God revealed it to you. What do I like about prayer and the biscuit? Uh, it's got to be the, the people, no doubt. Some of us consider us as, as disciples. We try to spread the prayer around. And um, I know the church did uh, next door, as um, far as community involvement, the church next door, they did a reenactment of uh, the Last Supper. And one of the first places they came was prayer and a biscuit. It's a pretty good thing when you can bring five different churches, five different denominations, all together at the table for the Lord's Supper. It was about Thanksgiving three years ago, and people said in Prayer and a Biscuit, they said, let's put together baskets for Thanksgiving. And so they started out and they said, well, let's get this many turkeys, let's get this many hams, let's get all the stuffing and all the stuff that goes in there. And they did and we took those to families in need. The next year, we did even more, and we took them, uh, many of them, to the social worker at the local elementary school, and they helped get those to families in need, and then we took several to other people we knew in the community would need. And Coach went and, and has a friend who was growing collards, and so he shows up and gets these collards that were cut that morning at like 5.30 in the morning, 
and they come and he, there's still frost on the collards that we're giving, putting a whole mess of collards in every basket for Thanksgiving. It's special touches like that that really amazed me that I'm always going to remember of Prayer and a Biscuit taking it to the next level as far as being a partner in this community for those in need. We've had actually had a couple of requests from two different primary schools like, you know, this would be good for our teachers. Could you come in and maybe pray with our teachers? So we ended up bringing some fruit and some biscuits and things such as that. And that started turning into a weekly occurrence. And it was cool because the group from Prayer and a Biscuit includes Presbyterians, but also includes Pentecostals. So here's Presbyterians and Pentecostals praying to support teachers at a local school. And we all had a ball. Yes, we brought them biscuits and Coach kept bringing them Krispy Kreme donuts too. This uh, Pentecostal church in Stedman heard about what we were doing as Presbyterians and they wanted to be a part of it. And so Joyce and Tony joined me every Wednesday as we went to encourage these teachers. How are you doing today, Tony? Outstanding, but improving. Super good, but getting better. Fired up, wired up, prayed up, studied up, ready to stand up, speak up, and ain't gonna shut up. Awesome, wonderful, colossal, dynamic, and tremendous. <laughs> With a triple dose of tenacity, a double dose of tenaciousness, I'm singing and shouting praises to the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and they are amazing and i learned so much because i don't interact with pentecostals all the time and so i learned so much from their styles of praying that now in a presbytery meeting i want to say an extra amen or something because i just feel the spirit moving in a different way the teachers just really appreciated the support and showed again and again through comments and even cards and I'll have to say just one of the most touching things. Uh, toward the end of the year, this year, 2017, there's a card and, and sometimes they'll sign a little card saying how appreciative they are for our support. And this time there's a, the envelope had a bump in it. And so I pulled open the envelope and I looked inside and they had given money. Uh, the teachers had just of their own volition donated money to go towards next year's Prayer and a Biscuit to help buy those biscuits that we give to the teachers. And that was just so touching for them to believe in this ministry so much that they wanted to be a part of it and support that on that level. I was blown away. So I, I, I never in my life would have imagined this tiny ministry blossoming into what it is both on Monday mornings in the main group here, but also at these other spinoffs, trying to use biscuits, use God's encouragement to uplift people and to empower people to shine.